Hello, hello, and welcome back to another uh, Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today we are going to uh, do a part three to one of the captain's voice message uh, Bible studies that we did. And it was in reference to signs and wonders. Okay? Uh, we did a, there was a video one and then there's a video two and in each one of the videos I went into the discussion of how the Heavenly Father uses different uh, incidents, circumstances, situations that uh, he makes occur because he is responsible for everything happening in the earth uh, even through the power of the enemy we know that too However, um, he's still at enmity with him. So, nevertheless, he uses he uses certain circumstances to speak messages to us and to bring certain uh, warnings to us, to, just to speak to us in any type of way. Just like he did in the Old Testament when he spoke to uh, various prophets in the Old Testament. And one that stands out that we're going to take a look at in this video it's going to be from the book of Hosea. Okay, in Hosea uh, chapter 1. And then actually, <clears throat> excuse me. I am going to, uh, let's see. I'll start at the beginning of chapter 1. Because it's actually verse 2 that we're going to elaborate on. But all of chapter 1 is good for the reading of this uh, message and Bible study that we're going over. And it's again in reference to signs and wonders. And this is like a part three to the part one and two we've already done. And it's in ref reference to the Heavenly Father uh, revealing messages, revealing his heart, uh, revealing his mind through different incidents that occur in the earth, okay? Uh, where he's actually giving us either instruction, a message, or just saying anything to the kingdom of God, okay, with that particular event. So, when I start here with chapter 1, it goes on to say, The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Barry, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. It says, The Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go. Take thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land has committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Okay? So it says, verse 3, so he went and took Gomor, Gomer, or whatever, Gomer, the daughter of uh, Debliam, and she, which she conceived and bare him a son. And then the Lord said unto him, Call the name of the son Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the, the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. Okay, so see here, and now first I'm going to go back up to verse 2, where he actually told Jose to go get a wife, okay, of whoredoms, a wife who was a whoremonger, okay, and her children, a whoremonger is also. And he says for him to, uh, because they'll get this woman and make her make her his wife, because this is a representation of his relationship with his inherited people. Okay, because remember the children of Israel at that time was his inherited people. So he's saying that this relationship that uh, Jose is to have with this whoremonging woman. Is representative to his relationship he's having with his inherited people which would be the children of Israel in the land that at that time okay so this is one in particular where we can actually take a look at where God is using an incident with the prophet telling in which he is telling the prophet what to do and then once the prophet does that how and the reason why he is explaining to the prophet why he's having him do that because, <clears throat> excuse me, the prophet represents the kingdom of heaven, which represents God, okay? And the whoremonger is representing the church, 
which would be the children of Israel in that circumstance, okay? we If we flip it over to today, it would be like, okay, God and the saints of God. If this was a message that he gave to a prophet of today to actually to deliver, that's what it would be in pertaining to uh, to the people today of the kingdom of God. It would be in that type of order. And that's how we would look at it. But again, we're using, um, we're in Old Testament and we're talking about the children of Israel, which were still his inherited people, people that he had chosen to be uh, in covenant with and to actually reveal himself to and to express himself through, okay, because that's what the covenant is all about. And um, acknowledging them as a people that are a part of his kingdom. And they are not in reverence and not acknowledge him as a God. Okay, so then we go on to, back over here to Hosea chapter 1. Uh, and it says here in verse 5, And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel and the valley of Jezreel. Okay, so she conceived again and she bare a daughter. And God said to Hosea again, call her name Laruhamat. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. You see how he is doing all of this with family, with Jose, the prophet, and then the woman, which would represent again the church and the body, the children of Israel, and see how he's using this scenario to explain his relationship with his inherited people and how he feels at that particular time about them because he's basically saying you're ho you're whoremongers okay and um he's saying that to his chosen people because they have walked astray you know they've stepped away from him and he goes more into that and the reason why all of that in uh the, in this whole book but we're just going and taking a look right now at how he uses uh Incidents, circumstances, and in people's lives, and the lives of people in his kingdom, okay, to express, to explain his messages he needs to express in the land through, you know, concerning his heart and anything uh, concerning the kingdom that he wants to get across to his people as far as their behavior. Because, again, or as far as behavior and how he's going to treat them. Any type of message. It could be a message of, just like this one, it's a message of judgment because of their behavior. And the prophet is um, given, being given the illustration of the you know what type of behavior they've entered into. He, and the whoremonger, which meaning that they drifted away from uh, the ways of the Lord and they've started running after their own imagination and their own heart doing what they want to do so they're no longer in the will of God they've stepped out of the will of God to do their own thing and so he considers that whoremonging and um, that's what he explains to the prophet here and in the whole story that's the illustration of it okay and let me see here what else do we have that we want to take a look at mm. Oh, okay, so let me finish up because he's he goes through this whole process and this whole chapter with the whole family, with the mother and the children, and he expresses his whole his heart about how he feels again about his inherited people, those that he had chosen to uh, express himself to. So he goes on and he says, uh, verse six. No, verse 5, I'll go through. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, call her name Lohelima. Okay, so that's the one about the daughter. I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. And that's the reason why she's getting that name, to explain that. Because God is very detailed. He's very instructional. He's very specific about things. And he has this, this mysterious, at times, the way... He does what he does, uh, but he does what he does. Okay, so verse 7, he says, But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. 
For now, when she had weaned Lo Ruhama, she conceived and she bare a son. Okay, so now she's getting ready to have a son. And it's, God said, call his name Loami. For you are not my people and you will not be your, I will not be your God. I mean, he had really had it with these people at this, at many times in the Old Testament, God had really gotten disgusted with the children of Israel. And this was even prior to him getting disgusted with the people prior to Noah and uh, him getting disgusted with the people prior to Noah and causing the earth to rain 40 days and 40 nights and destroying everything and starting all over with just Noah and his family. And so now the children of Israel who came from that same uh, lineage, those that he saved, you know, and instructed and called unto himself and said that they would be his people, they're doing pretty much the same thing and worse and he's having the same experience and um, this is what he's telling the prophet, he tells them verse 10 he says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them you are not my people there shall there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. So, you know, again, God gets disgusted and then he has mercy. His grace and his, you know, wonderfulness comes up and shines again. In verse 11, it says, Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, of, out of the land for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Okay? So, again, we just want to pay close attention to the information that we're focusing on, and that's the signs and wonders, that, and how God shows us uh, different signs and different wonders through events that are happening in the earth. And it may not even, because just like with the three incidents we, we talked about, uh, they may not even know that they're being used by God to to bring about a message, you know, but because they're a part of the body of Christ, because they're a part of the kingdom of God, and I have no doubt that, that they are because God uh, would not have been able to use them as he did. Okay, and so then it says, because uh, Jose, he was instructed by God to marry a woman named Gomer, and uh, their life is like a dramatization of the unfaithfulness of the people that God had chosen to be his inherited people, which was the children of Israel in that time. Okay, and that just gives a, another example of how God uses incidents in our lives or that take place in the earth because, uh, again, everything is happening because of him. It revolves around him. So he will send a message. He will reveal something to his kingdom in the earth, of course, by his kingdom. So then, the first incident, as we go back and just do a a uh, follow-up on the things that were said regarding each incident, just to lay a little bit more of a foundation so we can get more clarity regarding all of this, because it's very important, as the Holy Spirit is pushing and pressing down on me regarding this message, and it has been um, sticking with me, and I've been hearing it, and it's been with me for a while, okay, for several months, but I'm just not releasing it, okay, um, because again, it goes all the way back to the incident with, with George Floyd. Well, the first incident, and that was him, again, uh, and the incident was uh, with him and the man who had his knee on his neck. That's the representation of, again, the saints of God. And how the enemy having his hand or having his uh, knee on their on their neck on our neck the saints so that you know we can't move and do the things that the Heavenly Father has predestined in order for us to do and they try to block it try to stop it all of that that type of activity toward the saints of God in the earth today God is saying he is in the earth with vindication toward behavior that has been like that and the second incident would be, uh, ooh. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
hold on one second, would be the Rock, the uh, Chris Rock and Will Smith. Oh, excuse me, the slap incident. Okay, and with that incident, even with the names used, you know, and that Will and Smith, they were so just stuck out to me so clearly through the power of the Holy Spirit. Will Smith and then Chris Rock, you know, again, uh, Chris Rock representing uh, the incident, he representing the enemy, and Jada, of course, the wife, the whole six scenario representing like the saints and the earth and how the enemy has been uh, mocking, teasing, and just picking on the saints, okay? And how God, is. and Will Smith representing God in that particular format, being the one that, again, because he's married to the church, the body of Christ, he considers the body of Christ, the church, his wife. And whenever his wife is being attacked, just like Will Smith, when his wife was being attacked, God rises up in defense. He rises up in defense. And he says he's a vindicator. And to touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. Okay? Okay, and then with the third incident with the individual who just, um, the individual, the incident that just happened with the beating in Mexico, that incident was very clear, you know, and the, the uh, young girl represented the saints in the land. The saints in the land and how they're being mistreated and people are you know some people are taking it and uh, making a joke out of it mocking just like they did her that's the way the saints are being treated in the land and God is saying that his vindication is going forward it has been going forward and is going to continue to go forward and those that know in their heart and know that they have mistreated the saints of God. If there isn't a repentant, a remorse, a uh, feeling of, you know, that they know they have done wrong by the saints of God, then there is going to be, a, you know, like I said, the vindication that God has for them. And it may be any, you know, we never know what God's vengeance is going to be. But we know it can be real hardcore at times, depending. And he said he will return that recompense them upon you know their head whatever they were doing they would recompense that same activity back to them in, in their lives basically okay so we know that from our first bible study when we first started the captain's voice regarding uh, God's vengeance going forward in the land regarding his saints that are being oppressed afflicted and mistreated offended because again, he said, offend, it would be better for you to, uh, let me go to that scripture again. We want to read it. Matthew. In order for you to, uh, rather than offend, 18, chapter 18 in Matthew woe unto the world because of offenses for it must needs be that offenses come but woe to the man by whom the offenses come okay so wherefore if thy hand or thy foot offend thee or cut them off and cast them from thee it is better for thee to enter into life you know he's saying even if you if your hand offends you that's how serious the offenses are that individuals uh throw out at the saints of God okay so I'm going to end this right here because I don't want this to go too long we may come back on here as the Holy Spirit leads and guides to talk more about these signs and wonders because there has been many of them <clears throat> that have been coming and God has been showing us in the earth and we have not really I don't think we've really seen them like God is showing them to us or really comprehended what God is saying because he is pulling on me to actually come forward with these uh, these videos and explain certain things that we do not seem to be talking about in the body of Christ. So we're going to continue to talk about them as the Holy Spirit leads and guides me on this channel. God bless you. I um, hope that God is with you always and forever. May his peace rest upon you in the mighty name of Christ. And I will see you as we continue to go forward. On the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible study.